Why, hello, this is Carissa. And today we're in Sculpture Park, which is between, I'll probably have this wrong, but we are in New York and we are somewhere between Ellicottville and Springville. So again, probably have that wrong, but I am at Sculpture Park and we are joined by this lovely goddess in the background, which I thought would be perfect. So I apologize, the angle's just a little funny, but we have her in the background, so it doesn't get any better than this. And it definitely is turning fall here. I'm a little chilly, um, so we'll see. All right, so this one is all about, so no matter where I am, I know who I am. So no matter where I am, I know who I am. And this has been coming up for myself, but I've also seen this come up for, you know, just some of the women that I'm talking to and some of the women that I'm coaching as well too. So it's all great to be in like your high vibed, amazing self in your super supportive you know, situations, right? So maybe you're around your girlfriends, um, you know, or just where you're feeling like super comfortable, you know, then you're going to show up you for yourself and others in the, that beautiful high vibe, like nothing can knock me down place. But what do we do? when we're outside that, right? So what does that look like? And then just kind of knocking ourselves down, you know, where it starts to feel like wobbly. So no matter where I am, I know who I am. As I as a person don't change in different circumstances because I am me. So how do we take that and then kind of mold it into, you know, no matter where I am, I know who I am, but making that choice to stay at that super high vibe level. So that knowing who you are is awareness and then making the choice to be at the level you want to be is also another part of that. So no matter where I am, I know who I am. So this would be holding and admitting the energy of where like you want to be. So on the levels of consciousness, you know, where do you want to be? You know, like I would love, love, love to be in divine grace all the time. All the time is, is where the challenge is, right? So like I can feel and put on and like go heart wide open, divine grace. You know, when I'm in an amazing environment, when I'm in the woods by myself, like, oh yeah, I can definitely feel that. And I just like naturally tapped into that. But then when you move to like we, so when you move into more than just yourself, you know, that can be the time where I pop out of it. So, you know, for me, like, I'll just go back to like divine grace. So divine grace, like, what does that feel like? You know, how can I like feel the feels of that? So I would say this would be where like some of the Dr. Joe Dispenza stuff comes in where he talks about the think box. So like rather than going into that situation of the wheeze and, you know, circumstances where we start uh, might be starting to come down off from our highest vibration, you know, what, what does that look like and how do we stay tapped into the levels that we want to? So I would definitely say like awareness first thing. So we have to be able to be aware, but once we are aware and we're getting to that place where it starts to feel heavy and we're losing choices, I shouldn't say, well, losing choices may be not being the right path to call that, but let's say like you're vibing and just you know, internal, external, something happens and you get knocked off. Really, that's a choice. So you have to keep coming back to the moment where you're choosing. So, you know, making that conscious choice to continue to choose the vibe that you want to be in. Um, and then going back to divine grace, like that's where I'm always like, Ooh, that would feel so like amazing to constantly just be in that, that level and that vibration of divine grace. So like divine to me feels like just so like, um, it's like the combination of like, you know, mother earth and like spiritual quantum, so like divine is just kind of like where they meet. Like for me, it feels like my heart, like just like heart wide open, divine, 
you know, I'm just a, being a creator in a body, I'm just lit up, like just, just composing. I am the composer of my reality. So when I feel like grace, to me, grace is like the spiritual WD-40. <laughs> so like it just kind of just adds that easy button, that easy element, right? So just kind of staying in that divine grace, staying in that heart wide open, shield down, just loveliness. Everything's easy. You're like flowing down the river. You're not in push. You're not in pull. It's just fluidity, you know, like you're being water. So, so I guess like for me, okay, divine grace feels like being in water or just like being in a river maybe would be a better way. Just kind of like going with the flow and everything's like easy, elegant, and graceful. And I'm not saying like everything's easy as in like, you know, like life is life, but like you approach things with that ease of it. Like, oh, I know that this, you know, the situation, you know, to my human is going to be like, maybe it might feel a little unpleasant, but, you know, knowing that ultimately it's for your good and you're using the advantage principle, just, okay, well, you know, things come up in life and I can still just kind of keep that centered awareness internal reference point on a place of advantage and really just moving my attention and my intention to where I want it to be. So it feels like spending some time in the think box of like, okay, well, when do we come off from that? When do we start to come down to the levels? Um, and then like another piece of that to kind of like go into that more or less is like, I feel like I'll come down to it when I'm popping into the lower levels of consciousness with like the abuser victim starting to come into like, I'm feeling victimized. So I'm feeling like somebody did something to me or the universe did something to me or like when I'm not fully accepting where I am and I'm in like this push pull that's where I feel like it's that force. So, and I think just a lot of people might have grown up too, just in a, in a household of force. So like forces of the lower vibration of the anger and the depression and the anxiety and just, you know, perhaps being around parents that have that. Ooh, we got a little wobbly. <laughs> I might have to hold that. Uh, just kind of being around an environment and parents who had that. So like, that's what you know. But, you know, when you start to step out and move up to those higher levels, like you're starting to move into personal power, which is so much different than force. Force is like the, oh, sorry, this keeps moving on me. Ah! So force is just, you know, those lower levels and it's to duality, like push, pull back and forth, that kind of thing. And that feels heavy and icky and like your heart knows that something's just a little off, right? Like you don't feel like you're fully connected, like your head and your heart. And that's where you start to kind of move through those lower levels. And then from there, you know, you kind of get stuck in that with somebody else, like with another person or with a situation. So moving to that place of, you know, love or above or divine grace, like what does that like look like and feel like for you? You know, spending some time in that think box of, you know, what do you want it to look like? Where do you want to be? And how can you show up in better alignment that way? Like that feels a lot different than, than in that push-pull force. Um, and something just came up for me like last weekend with this. I felt like I was in the company of somebody who just was, you know, like, let's just say like not in a good mood. And I ended up being in a situation where I like got poked. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm actually going to like stay super aware during this time because I know that this is what I'm working on. Like that, like I'm moving down the levels of consciousness when I feel like I'm being like attacked or I have to defend myself. And I'm big into like, I don't need to, I have nothing to defend, hide or prove. So like here I am getting poked and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great because now I get to like be conscious during it to see what's happening and what's going on and what's coming up. 
So I like definitely got poked by somebody and I'm intentional, intentional, whatever. It doesn't matter. So I was like, oh, I'm starting to feel like I'm going into defending myself or like my nose curled up and I just went into like contraction. So, you know, in an effort to like stay totally aware, um, I actually excused myself and I started like, go, like I ran into the, I shouldn't say ran, I went into the bathroom and like I just wrote out like, oh, this is what this feels like. It feels super limiting. It feels like somebody's putting labels on me and what I'm capable of. Um, and it feels like they're putting their nastiness on me. Like this is theirs and they're just trying to like get it out. And I happen to be like the person that it's getting out on. So like, oh, that's interesting, right? Trying to figure out what that is and how to feel that out. So it was definitely interesting. And like, it was weird to like be super conscious while that was happening. Like, what does this look like while this is happening? Like, how does this feel? Like, oh, it feels super heavy and super icky. What can we do to move through this and get to a place of like staying super conscious while it happened and feeling like I have a choice of how I show up? So you know, coming back and then moving through like the labels of like what was put on me, what I'm capable of, on um, how I dare I show up, you know, and the ways that I'm showing up or, you know, like all the, the things that just felt really heavy and unpleasant and just kind of sitting and working with those. So like it was cool to be aware of it. And then next time it comes up, like as I'm spending time, obviously like this to me is my think box. So like as I spend time like there next time, because you know it's going to come up, there's always going to be poking or whatever that looks like. So next time it comes up, I'll be able to continue to make choices. So not to hide, not to run, not to defend or not to prove myself. And like what that looks like is hopefully going to be way different because I can get to the point where I'm moving through awareness to choice. And then eventually I'll be able to like, I'll move through choice. I'll probably sit in a place like as you start to catch it, you go from a place of like, oh, I feel this and this happened 20 minutes ago to a place of like, oh, that happened 10 minutes ago when I'm feeling this and like catching that awareness. And then like, oh, five minutes. Oh, I'm in the middle of it, catching the awareness and making the choice. So like just from prior experiences and just kind of moving up that like through the upgrade, I know that it starts with awareness and then it moves to choice, but choice, like it takes a while for you to get to the place where you can keep moving choice backwards. So like, oh, 30 minutes after I'm into this funk, I can go back and be like, oh, it was because I was reacting to this or I was reacting to that. So it's definitely like a different place and trying some things on as you move through your up level. So definitely trying to stay in the awareness and catching it as soon as it comes up versus like as it comes up later, you'll be able to move through it. So this is really putting on, I know who I am in every situation and regardless of what's going on and trying to sit with that and stay with that. So that's definitely like what seems to be coming up and what I'm seeing like both in myself, but as people move through it, like it's that wobbly energy of like, you know, it feels heavy, but you're not quite sure how to shake it off. And you know where you want to be, but you're not quite sure how to move it up through the scales of levels of consciousness. So continuing to move up through those scales, like trying them on and spending some time like you know, the other day or just like as an exercise to try, like journal on like what your perfect day looks like. And for me, like my perfect day within divinity and like divine grace and like what that felt like or what that could feel like. So that would be, you know, like what can I do just to stay in that vibe while I'm working on like making that full upgrade or that full embodiment. So that like feels like to me like just being in full control of your schedule like what crazy freedom is that to have full control over your schedule and with that schedule like oh cool like I am in full control of my schedule and that's what divine grace looks like and moving through those okay so I think I have the angle a little better if you're watching so hopefully this will work for us so Okay, to dive back in through a different part of this. So again, no matter where I am, 
I know who I am. So holding and admitting my vibration. And I, as a person, don't change in different situ circumstances because I am me. So just kind of like working through that and holding that. So like, it seems so simple, but yet like the, eh, doesn't have the easiness to it. So working with that. Ooh. So this is a choice, simple, but it might not feel easy, right? So like, it's literally a choice, like choosing. So it almost feels like a worthiness too. So like, when do you like sit and think about like, your worthiness to be who you are versus changing who you are and moving down the levels of vibration because of other people, other situations, like whatever that might look like for you. So, you know, like that's, that feels heavy. <laughs> like it's simple, but it's not easy. Like it's a choice. You have to keep coming back to choice, which means you have to keep coming back to awareness. So like staying in that seated center of awareness, like being okay with feeling like it doesn't quite like vibrate right at first. Like it might feel like awkward at first. Like I was just telling my son yesterday, I'm like, you have to be bad in order to be good. Like you have to be bad at something. I should clarify. <laughs> You have to be bad at something in order to be good at something. So like, what if we have to be okay with being bad at like working through this, like that wobbly energy and just being like, oh, okay, cool. Well, this is going to feel like a little heavy and sticky at first because I'm not used to this. I'm not used to being in this vibration and used to being around people of this vibration. So just continuing to recalibrate and realign. So it's like awareness, choosing and calibrating back up to like where you want to be and like moving through that and that it's going to feel really like icky or heavy or dumb or just you know, like it's just going to feel not so awesome at first while well, you're getting it like into your energy field where you're getting comfortable with it, where you're getting used to it, where you're starting to take off the training wheels, but holding the space of like, like, yay, like, oh my, this is just part of the process. Like, oh, how cool is it that I feel like weird or dumb or like just not quite right? And how cool is it to start off in this space of like, okay, doing it from the think box, so like spending time, like, let's say here or journaling, like, okay, what does this feel like? How do I show up? And then like, okay, where's like the safest place you can start to like tap into this energy and try it on? Like maybe it's around, you know, people that you're super comfortable with, or maybe you're going to put yourself in a situation that just feels like just a little touch of heaviness. And then you can like pull yourself, okay, awareness, choice and recalibrate and then you can keep moving that through and like oh this energy is that and then I can keep moving myself back up through every time I catch it but in a like an environment that feels like safer and then eventually you're going to feel like better and better but like coming at it from a place of curiosity and fun versus like heaviness like you know, when you're in that heaviness, something's off, right? Like just, you know, something's off. But if you can come at it from a place of like curiosity and like, ooh, I get to play and like, this is fun. Like, I'm really going to be changing myself and like my whole vibration and what that is. So how do I move to this space? Because I can't think of any more important work then for me to work on my beingness and how I show up and staying at that higher level of vibration, more often than like choosing that highest level of vibration and staying there, as often as I feel like I want to. So being like super comfortable in that place and making sure that that works for you. You know, making sure that like you, you know, eventually just move up to a place of 
you know, where you're putting yourself in more and more situations that are just a little off and then continuing to practice, like knowing that like this feels heavy and sticky and not so awesome. And then moving to a place of like, okay, I knew coming into this, this was my training wheels opportunity and I'm going to give it a try and see what it looks like. Cool. Okay, so where can you start to like mess around with this new energy? Where can you start to put those training wheels on and spend some time in the think box of, you know, what does this feel like? How do I show up for myself? How do I show up for others? Like, where's the easiest place I can start to try this on where my environment would feel um, like good and neutral and like, not so heavy like so what are like the little baby steps like what does that look like to try on you know a love or above or total acceptance or willingness or divine grace like all of those like super yummy words that you know like oh wouldn't it be great if I was always vibing there but it's a choice so like you have to start to put the choice on like Again, like copy paste universe, like we have to get to the place where we can start to copy paste this. So we have to spend some time in that think box of like, where can we start to implement this? So, you know, continuing to come back to divine grace, like where can I show up more in divine grace? But where's a place where I feel comfortable trying it out as I'm starting to work on completely moving this up through my life, you know, like where do I, where do I start this? You know, do I start this with my family? Do I start this at work? Do I start this in the areas of hobby? Like what's the safest container that I can start to work through and work on this? Like it would be lovely if we just like woke up tomorrow and you're like, I'm divine grace all the time and I'm never going to change. Like, okay, great. That lasts all of three seconds. So, you know, spending some time in that think box of like, what does this look like? What does this feel like? What am I calling in? What are my attentions? And I'm going to continue to point my attention there. So continuing to move through those levels of consciousness, popping yourself up to love or above, divine grace, willingness, love, divinity, just all those like super light, bubbly words. And like, what does that look like? And what does that feel like? You know, how can I like put my first foot down after I wake up in the morning on the floor with divine grace? How can I make my coffee in the morning putting on the vibe of divine grace? Like, how do I interact with, you know, the people in my life? How do I start my computer up in the morning? How do I go through my practices? Like those type of energies is just so much different and so lovely versus, you know, just kind of walking through life unconscious. Okay, we have more and more company. We're in a popular spot. So we're going to stop. Have a good one.